we're just going to be chatting and having fun today. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and share my screen, introduce Tenalytics and what we do, and then we'll dive straight into what we have for today. So I'm going to be bringing my screen up. Oh, uh, yeah, before that, I'd like to meet everybody on the call. So if today is the first day you're going to be joining us and um, welcome, I would like to know your name and where you're joining us from. So you can just drop in the chat very quickly your name and where you're joining us from. My name is Dam Lola and I'm joining from Lagos, Nigeria. And I'd like to meet every other person on the call as well. So please tell me your name and where in the world you are joining us from. Very quickly in the chat, please let's drop that in. <laughs> All right, I'm Ma from Chicago. It's good to see you. Thank you for joining. Semi Lulua from Nigeria. It's good to see you as well. Cindy from Ghana. Nice to see you, Cindy. Soji from Olua, Soji from Scotland. K. Um, Oshaza, not sure how to pronounce that. From UK, you're welcome. Rhoda and Ariette, and yes, yeah, good to see everybody. Thank you so much for joining. It promises to be very amazing. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and, um, you know, very quickly walk us, just introduce Tenalytics to us and what we really do at Tenalytics. But if you can see my screen, please drop a one for me in the chat as well. Thank you very much. All right, so Tenalytics, who, who are we and what do we do? We are a leading educational technology company focused on providing specialized training in technology skills and delivering comprehensive data consulting services. And we've been around for over four years, um, building talents across the world. And, you know, we've helped over 2,000 plus people transition from the classroom into their first job in tech across UK, US, Canada, Africa, Asia, is anywhere, let's talk about it. We are very committed to making the technology space more accessible to everybody, regardless of your um, background, regardless of what, what whatever you've been doing before. And we do this through premium experiential training in data analytics, business analysis, data science, data engineering, um, cybersecurity. We have financial analytics and HR analytics and um, agile project management, uh, cybersecurity, I think I said that earlier, and so on and so forth. And we have instructors from different parts of the world, from leading global companies in the world, like Apple, like Microsoft, like McKinsey, um, Sahara, you know, uh, from a lot of spaces, really. And um, they come with their wealth of experience, with their real world experience, dedicated to delivering and engaging practical, learning experience that ensures that you receive maximum value for your investments. <clears throat> All right. So if you would like to get to know more about what we do at Tenalytics, you can reach out to us on Instagram at Tenalytics, on um, LinkedIn at Tenalytics, on um, our website, tenalytics.io, and I think Twitter as well at Tenalytics. All right. So that's who we are in, you know, the shortest form ever. Um, what are we doing here today? Like I said earlier, we're going to be having a very short fireside chat with some of our ex-participants, people that have gone through our program and, you know, they've come to share experience and tell you one or two. Then we're also going to be understanding the in-demand tech career path and how you can choose the best career path for you. How you can get started as well in our upcoming course that's coming up um, August 3rd. 2024 i would also look at a couple more success stories so meet your host for today we have chikwe Meka, who is a grc expert with close to a decade years, decade experience decade years of experience in grc and consulting and as the ceo of tenalytics he has helped over 720 people with no prior tech background transition into tech and land their first jobs Right, and he has experience cutting across um, GRC in the banking sector. Head of, he has worked as the head of control in fintech industry, also as a data analyst. He has also worked in the hospitality as a hospitality consultant. All right, so he has worked in various sectors at. Um, uh, 
in capital markets and hospitality sectors. So if you'd like to get to know more about Chukwemeka, you can check him out on LinkedIn at Chukwemeka Iqbal and then on Twitter at um, Emeka Iced and on Instagram at um, Iqbal Chuks. Okay, so this is me. I'll be hosting the Fireside session. My name is Oluwa Damlola and I have close to five years of experience in data analytics and business analysis. All right. I have um, experience cutting across the supply chain as a data analyst, FMCG as a data business analyst, and of course, the ethic as a data analyst. And I've helped about 2,000 people transition into tech. So if you'd like to connect with me, you can check me out. Or yeah, just connect with me on LinkedIn at Oluanda Mlola Ajimobi. All right. So that's, you know, the briefest part of it today. So at this point, I'm going to be bringing up the amazing people that we have on board. That's our um, participants. Just I'm going to let them introduce themselves, just to their own, and then we'll get straight into the session. So if you can hear me, hi, uh, Joel, hi, Michael, hi, Stephen. Can you guys, can you guys turn on your camera? You know, let's, let's get straight into it. Hi, Joel, it's good to see you today. How are you doing? I'm just going to add a spotlight. Can you hear me? Hey, Damien. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I hope you are doing well. Yes, Loud I can hear you. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Right, I'm doing very well. How about you? How about very you? Very fine. Very fine. Thank you so much for asking. All right. So that's right. Joel. Um, it's good to see you, Joel. Hi, Steven. And um, hi, Steven. I can see you. Um, do you want to want me to say hi? Hi, Dami. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Steven. It's good to see you. Do you want to unmute? Uh, sorry, turn on your camera so I oh. can spotlight you as well. Cool. Um, one second. Okay. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Can you hear me? I think that's me. Hi, uh, Hi Damilola. I can hear you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's good to see you as well. Do you want to turn on your camera so I can spotlight you? Okay, oh, you're driving. All right. Uh -huh. We can manage, we can manage. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to get started with Joel. Hi, Joel, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, tell us what you were doing before, how you got to know about analytics and what you currently do now. Okay, so I'm Joel Madener, currently working as a data engineer for Bridge. And before that, I was working as a process engineer in a manufacturing company. Um, and at the time I was trying to, you know, get, uh, apply for my PhD, but then it wasn't coming out. It wasn't successful for me. And I was looking at, okay, what can I do while waiting? So that's when I stumbled on the data world because I, I wasn't very familiar with anything data, data analysis or anything data. So my curiosity just drove me into, you know, going down YouTube and, and, uh, and Google just trying to find out, okay, what careers can I opt for? Or what other things can I do while waiting? And I remember at the time, I reached out to a friend in the UK at the time who was doing data analysis. And he was like, you know what? There is something like data engineering. And it is, it is getting um, quite popular and there's a high demand for it. And before all of that, I, I had stumbled on a few you know, ads from, from a feminine on, on, on Instagram. But... I wasn't really interested at the time. But you know what they say, when you are ready, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So I stumbled on another ad where he was like trying to talk about data and everything. And then there was a link to the YouTube masterclass. And then I attended the masterclass, um, attended it like three times. Before I was there, the last edition I attended, the last masterclass that I attended was around September. And in that, in that, in that session, you know, he was like, uh, this is an opportunity to get something done before the end of the year. So I said, ah, what, am I, what am I delaying? Just, you know, give it a shot. And that's where we are right now. Thank you so much for sharing that, Joel. Um, good to see you again. Hi, Steven. You, um, I think I'm the one that's frozen. Yeah, hi, Steven. All right, so do you want to introduce yourself? Um, tell us what you were doing before, how you got to know about analytics and what you currently do.
Stephen, you're frozen. Uh, you're you're um on you're muted rather. Oh, can you hear me right now? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think my microphone was on mute there. Um, so nice to meet all of you. Hi, Joel. Hi, Dami, and hi everyone on this call. Um, anointing Stephen. You guys can call me Stephen. I got to. I got to meet or got to join Analytics at a point in my life where I was confused. And that's very interesting because I have a degree in computer science and engineering, but I just didn't know what to do because in the real world, it's really different. It's really different from what you've been taught in school and real life projects. So I was just wondering the same way Joe was wondering, looking for different things to do. And that was years ago. And I was doing research on things I could do. They were very numerous things I could do out there, but I saw this ad from um from Tenalytics and when the sweet talker, Femina, was um trying to sell the whole Tenalytics thing. And I bought into it because it was interesting. And I got to schedule this team meeting with um, I think that was Adeza and we got to speak. I just knew that okay, you know what, this is something that could actually help me get more of um work experience, if you know what I mean. Because see one thing about tech and any analytic role, nobody wants to hire you if you don't have experience. That's just a sad truth. So this is the best platform or this is a very good platform that will give you that experience you're needing. I'm not doing, this is not a pitch for them, but I'm just telling you my own story. Yeah, I'm not being paid to pitch for anyone, but this is my own story and how they've helped me transition into my current position right now. So after that conversation with um, a, if you met um, Adeza, I enrolled on data analytics. I didn't just want to jump into data engineering, which is my goal. I just wanted to have a foundation because I feel like data analytics is more of like a junior brother to data engineering, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to understand the scope of the whole data journey from being a data analyst, data engineer, data scientist, and all, data scientist and data engineering. So, and that's, but that's been my goal. And I went into data analytics done a couple of projects and I was like, you know what, this is great, this is fantastic. Done a course with them as well on data science. It's good, it's wonderful and I'm loving it. And um, my future goal is to do something in data engineering as well. So I can have this three skill sets and um, ready to explode. So that's just been my my story with analytics and um, yep, they've been off. That's my encounter with them. Thank you so much for sharing, Stephen. Um, that's quite amazing. Yeah. All right, Michael, can you hear me now? Hi, Michael. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, I can. Can you hear me too? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, oh, so. Okay. Yeah, good evening. My name is Sadim. This is Sunday, Michael. And uh, I'm a businessman. So quite before I came to the analytics, I, I was... I was doing, I was self-employed back in Nigeria, so I'm moving to the UK. You know, starting a new life, a new environment. I just thought I need something to back up, so I don't keep spending all my salary, all my income on the business, on rent and bills and all that. So uh, I didn't even know anything about analytics, to be honest. And I think it was uh, a day we were in class when I was doing my masters in the Limoboch University in Leicester. So along the line, I, we hadn't been in discussion with my with my friends, and he just said, "Oh, this transitioning into into tech that he had about one organization he can actually learn from. They are quite flexible when it comes to time, and uh, they have pre recorded video you can actually watch even if you are not chance during the live class and all those all those kind of things." It, it it wasn't interest me to be honest, so I didn't even really pay close attention to that. So I think it was the the following weekend, the normal guys talk. I just called this my friend. Oh, let me just say hi to Mr. Peter. If we could catch up with uh, one or two games on PS, because it's my PS partner. So I called. He didn't pick. So the following day, I just called back again. He said, Oh, bro, I called yesterday. I couldn't hear from. Say, Oh, sorry. He has started that uh, program. He told me. So out of copy, copy, let me just let me just copy him since we play games together. Let's just be doing this class together as well too. So when we are not playing game, we do it together. I was not really having you know so much plan and I didn't even have any plan. I just like, okay, let me just join. Let's just be doing this thing together so that we can be on the same page at every point in time. So that was how I came about the uh, analytics and uh, we started the class. But funny enough that my friend didn't even finish. 
when we, I think it was when we started uh, SQL, he, he stopped attending class. I did all I could do just to carry him along. Bro, you have to come. I join this class. I do this. I do that. And that was my story about analytics. And uh, after that, we had the internship where I met some other guys. And uh, during the internship, we had a cross collaboration with uh, the PEA guys, data engineers, and the uh, the data analytics guy, I wrote for data science, by the way. So that was when I met with different people of like mind. Then we started pushing things. I started in uh, February last year, and uh, I got my first job in June, same last year, which was actually a contract. That was about maybe five five months into the program because I started, I was very curious. I've never done any interview in my entire life. I've never had a CV. I've never had the opportunity to have a CV. So I was just curious about everything. I want to have a CV. I want to go for interview to see how it looks like and all that. So I started applying for jobs, I think a month into the program, to be honest. And I started having conversation with recruiters, having to send email, having to reply email, getting myself familiarized with the corporate world. And five months into the program, I got my first job, which was which lasted me for six months. And uh, it ended, the contract ended January this year. And uh, then I had to go back into the market again to start looking for a job. And that was when I got another permanent role in April, which I resumed, I resumed last last month. Yeah, I resumed any last month for my second job. So that has been my journey so far into the tech world. But now I forgot about my initial background. I had my first and second degree in mechanical engineering. But then I've never practiced for once, but that has been a leverage for me as well too. But then I'm happy I my path crossed that my friend's path because without him I wouldn't have heard about the uh, analytics. Oh. So that's just my journey into data world so far. Thank you. That's a very interesting journey, um, Michael. And of course we love friends and families that always put us on amazing things thank you so much for sharing that story all right so um i'm gonna go ahead and ask um the next question all right guys so how did your training with tenalytics prepare you for what you currently do now so let's talk about um the cv review sessions the the employability sessions basically everything that you, you know you went through in the mentorship session the training itself everything that you learned how did it prepare you for what you currently do in your current role as a um, data analyst, data engineer, data scientist. Steven, do you want to go first? Do you understand the question that I asked? <laughs> you... Yeah, yeah, I always <laughs> keep it to myself on, on mute. Um, the, the guy who just spoke, the man who just spoke right now says he, he works and plays games in Leicester or something like that. And I just remember that I didn't tell people um, where I work. Um, but I could do that right now before answering your question. I also work in Leicester where he stays. So it might be nice to link up with him sometime when I'm in Leicester. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, your question is how did Tenalytics prepare me for the real market? I'll put it there, real market, because it's quite different out there, isn't it? Um, so Tenalytics did 80% of the job. They did. They did real good. I'll give them 85, 85. Yeah, they did real good. What I mean by real good is they kind of um focused on the things that are done in a workplace setting. So what I mean by that is um it's not all about having the theoretical knowledge of something. It's all about having the practical understanding and how to it's, it's problem solving in the world of data. It's all about problem solving, isn't it? So see when you which is something that I learned from analytics, how to go about solving problems, giving solution, and the way the courses are being packed up. They teach key things that are needed to be successful in a workplace setting from projects down to the choice of topics that have been taught. I think, yep, yeah, uh, my first professional job as a data analyst in the UK, uh, see, when I got into the role, the, you know, if you're, see, if you don't have experience and you go into a role that is a very, very big wave or breeze that can blow you and if you're not strong enough, you fall off. And what I mean by you fall off is HR is going to sack you. That's what I mean by you're going to follow. So Tenalytics actually made me stand that wave because it's wanting to do your interview and say all you know 
and is wanting to go on site and work with real data and see that, okay, you know what, you have been taught that a database can have five columns and you go to a company and you can see that there are 52 columns on one table. Or, you know what I mean? And you have to go in there and solve those problems. So Analytics here made me understand that, you know what, this is what you can do. This is how to go about it. And this is how to solve problems and get data driven solutions. And yeah, that that kept me on my first job, second job and onto my job right now. So it's it's been good with them, I must say. Fantastic, um, Stephen, thank you. What about you, Joel? How do analytics prepare you for your current role? What you want you to right now? Okay, so um, the, the good thing about analytics is that analytics is an ecosystem in that everything you need, both for the training and both, you know, for the applications and the interview is all within the package. Let me start from the training. Um, I don't think I would have had the confidence to apply in the first place or to put myself out there if I wasn't sure I was being well-trained. And for me, the, the turning point was during the capstone. The capstone, was, the capstone was really rigorous. The capstone drilled me. So I remember, you know, spending nights. Just, I remember spending, the time I went to work by, by 6 and I slept around 3 a.m. because I wanted to get the project done. There, there were days where I was just having blockers all, all through and I was, I was really tired. But I kept at it. I told myself, this is, my, this is the evidence I give to myself that I can do the job. So I stayed at it. And after, I remember the day we were presenting that project, I felt so happy. I felt so confident. And then even um, the guy that was, the guy that was, the guy we brought on the panel that was, you know, the one that was supposed to be like the, the, the interviewer or something like that. He, he said something that stayed with me. He said, you know, keep at it. You're, you're really good at that. And for me, it boosted my, my confidence because I know that I put in the work. So like, you know, the other speaker said, it's one thing to say you can do this. And it's one thing to be able to go and, you know, they give you the job and you're able to do that. That's two different things. So they equipped me in that aspect where I was well-trained. And during the interview, something, you know, during the interview, when I was preparing for the interview, rather, you know, I did not have to go and start searching Google and searching YouTube because the mentorship sessions, everything I needed was there. Everything was there. I, I mean, from the star approach to the how everything was there. So I did not have to go outside. Everything I needed was already was already in the package. I could just go to my my Google Classroom and I that's what I did. I just spent time just writing out everything that I needed to do. And that was it. So it gave me both the confidence to apply and it gave me both the tips I needed to scale through the interview. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. That's that's very good to know. Hi, Michael. I don't know if you got my question and if you're able to speak right now. Yeah, I did. Thanks, Tamilola. Um, I think the first thing I learned while I I'm a dedicated person, I know that for sure. But uh, when I joined Analytics, I became more dedicated and and one great thing I took away from Analytics, aside the fact that I transitioned, I got the knowledge from them, is how to be time cautious. Like when you come to the class, class starts immediately, nothing like, uh, oh, let's give them 20 minutes, let's give them 10 minutes. So you, you, you get to you know, you get to have that for sure, that you have to come to the class as early as possible. So it got to a point that I had to come to the class like five minutes and uh, I remember Brahma. Brahma used to play us some you know, nice songs. So even if you come to the class 15 minutes before the class, you won't be bored. Then you have an ambience that prepares you for the class you'll be having in the, you know, in the, in the next few minutes. Um, I, I built a new family from Tenalytics as well. In my class, wow. I had some guys that we keep, we keep in touch with today. Some of them are in Canada and they are doing quite well. So it's it's an added advantage for me as well too. And the, talking about the midweek classes, talking about the CV review, the mentorship class, it's all awesome to be honest. I told you guys the other time that I never worked in my entire life and I never had any reason to have a CV. Now I I when I apply for a job, I I have that confidence that oh they will definitely get back to me. When I apply for a job, I know that they will get back to me if I take my time to tailor my CV quite well to it. So these are skills that I got from analytics and I took my time to develop it more, to develop myself the more on it. Do you understand? So it's 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 an avenue for anyone with zero background in most of all these things to lay the foundation. When you have the proper foundation being laid, 
and you are not lazy, you are determined, you are focused, and you know exactly what you want. Just you know, just take it from me. They have the right tools, they have the right set of guys, they have the right team to help you lay the foundation properly. Then the rest will depend on you because no matter what, even when you go to the uni, when you get there, whatever they give you, you have to go and build up on it. So whatever you learn from them, you still have to go and take your time to do some kind of uh, extra diligence by pushing them further. If you at least listening to the other two guys that have been speaking, you can you know infer that from their own uh, point of view as well that they have to take in extra work to to balance things up. So it was a great experience. Let me just summarize it that way so I don't take you guys much time. Thank you for sharing that, Michael. Very insightful something. Okay, so um, I'd also like to ask you guys, was there a particular part of the, you know, a particular um, part of the, you know, program, maybe during your normal classes, maybe your mentorship sessions, maybe the CV review session that, that made an impact on your career? Was there a particular point in time that somebody said something during any of the sessions that made a, an impact in your career? Do you want to, Stephen, I can see you nodding your head. Do you want to go first? Yeah, 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 I'm happy to to speak. Um, I think all part of are you speaking about just the mentorship session alone or the entire no, program? No, no. So the entire I think program. um I would like to point out the mentorship session and um the watch me do it video. So watch me do it video. I don't know if you guys know what watch me do it video is. It's like um a pre recorded video that has been uploaded on on um. I think that was his, his, your Gmail or something, yeah, on Google Classroom, and you can go in there and watch at your own pace, learn at your own pace and all of that. But you see the fantastic thing and something that I really loved about this whole analytics program, I still give it up to them, and it's the mentorship session. So you see in the mentorship session, yeah, I'm someone who, I'm a very shy speaker. See, when I speak to people, yeah, I just don't know how to hold conversations for so long. It's, let's just go straight to the fact that there's no point waffling. That's just me. And but you see, when I got to realize that getting a job is like toasting a girl, let's just be honest. So you need to say those sweet words that the interviewers need to hear. I'm sorry, PG, yeah, let's be keeping it PG, but I think everyone here is above 18. But it's like trying to get a girl or you want to find a wife, you need to say something that's just going to like entice them. And that's something I learned from the mentorship session, saying what the people who are interviewing you, the interviewers want to hear. That stands, it's not all about what you know. Sometimes it's how you present yourself to, to people and they'll be like, you know what? We've seen five people who have the same skill sets, who have worked for five, 10 years. Of, they've had, they have an experience of 10 years. But what makes you stand out? How do you present yourself? How do you speak to people? How do you engage? You know, people actually, because it's, it's when you go for that interview, your body language and everything, how to articulate your speech and how to, you know, modify your answers in a way that, as well suited to anyone who's listening you know what i mean so this is something i really learned from mentorship session from the guys who who um who we are brought to speak and from a feminine and a Deza themselves and i tend to notice something is which is a sequence between how everyone that comes on the mentorship session speak they always go about you know there's a format and there is a way of answering questions that can lead you to success and which is what the person who spoke um joel he said something about um um star approach Fine and good. I've known that approach for a very long time, but have I put it? Have I put it into work? No, I haven't. But you see, when I came on this program, I've learned things like start approach. It helps you structure your answers to more precise, to more accuracy, and you just give the answer, and that's just the best answer for it. You know how to speak to people during an interview, compose yourself, compose your speech, and that's something I learned from the mentorship session. Which, to be honest, these days if I go for an interview, I'm not even saying this out of um place of pride but i just don't prepare for interviews at this point to be honest i just look at the what's it called try to research for the company yeah but try to research about the company and when i go i feel like i'm so confident to speak to anybody and that's what analytics have actually equipped me with yep i love that for you steven thank you yeah. for sharing um Michael, do you want to go next? Was there a specific moment during your training that um, impacted your career in a very positive way? Hi, Michael. Yeah. Uh, hi, Daminola. To be to be honest, I can't really I can't really say one specific uh, moment because 
it's it was just like uh, when I finish a class, I'm all I'm already anticipating to meet another class, so you know, to be in another class. But one, I think there is this guy they call uh, is it Abdullah or something? The guy do come on, he do come on mentorship session like uh, maybe two or three times before I finished my own program. I I got inspired by his own story when he said he learned. I think he said he enrolled for data science twice or something like that. He said he enrolled for data science twice and uh, he, he popped up, he popped up something for remote job. So, and this guy is in Nigeria and he's working with, uh, he's working remotely with about two companies in the US. So I was really motivated that, oh, give me this, I should be able to do even much more. Than in the Nibu environment. Is it just me who can hear him or is it uh, everyone? I thought it was me. Okay. <laughs> hey, Michael, are you still there? Sorry, <laughs> sorry since my phone got reconnected. <laughs> can you see him now? Yeah, we can hear you now. So yeah, I, I got very motivated by his story and I got inspired that if someone in Nigeria could put so much energy to do much more, then how much more me in an enable environment I should be able to, you know, to do much more. So I think that's the only one I can actually pinpoint, but other moments are quite interesting and I can't start, you know, talking about everything, but I can actually, you know, pinpoint that one. Thank you. Thank you, um, Michael. All right, Joel, do you want to share? Um, any moments that impacted your career during the yeah, program? Like, yeah, like Michael and Steven have said, there have, there have been lots of turning moments, turning points moments. Um, but I'm just going to cite two. I'm going to start with um, one thing that um, Femina said during one of our mentorship sessions. And then he said, he said, paying the money is the easiest thing. I mean, you could just, can you hear me? Go on. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. The feminine said paying the money is the easiest thing. But then the work is getting the job done. It's doing your assignment. It's coming for the mentorship session. It's being present for the classes. And that's the truth. You know, because you feel like, okay, uh, she has paid the money. They should just somehow miraculously, the job should just land on my feet. But that was like opening my eyes to know that, oh, well, I've just paid the money. It just, it's just like pay for the ticket. It, it doesn't guarantee anything. The 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 80% of the work is still left for you. So that was like a recalibration for me to know that, you know, I've paid the money, but that's no that's no guarantee for anything. And secondly, the the Capstone project. The Capstone project was nah, it was it. I, I think I've met, I think I've mentioned this previously, but the Capstone project really, really drilled, it really drilled me. Because at some point I felt like what's 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 all this for? I mean, I have a job, I can just manage. I mean, not everybody must must, must do this tech thing. But like I said, it was it was it was me proving to myself that I can do this thing. So the capstone project was it for me. It was what gave me the confidence to apply. It was what gave me the confidence to put myself out there. Um, and then here we are. So those two moments I would say were were really turning points for me, particularly. The other things that you mentioned, but I just want to stick to these two for now. Lovely. Thank you for sharing. So um, just a follow-up question, right, guys? Were there any misconceptions that you had prior to joining the program that you felt like would have hindered you from maybe getting a job? And um, what are your thoughts on this misconceptions now? Joe, do you want to go first? All right. So I think I think my my major there were actually quite a number of misconceptions. But my major misconception was the fact that I felt like um, it was too good to be true. I mean, I don't have the experience. So who's going to want to hire me because I, I do not have the experience. But one thing that they did during the mentorship session was to shape our minds to see that even in the job that I, I was working at, I could still leverage the experience I was, I had as a day. I could still leverage some certain skills. There were still some certain transferable skills that I could leverage on. So I felt like, you know, so I used to think I'm starting from zero, but then they made me understand that I'm actually not starting from zero because since I've worked somewhere and whether you believe it or not, you're probably interfaced with data in one way or the other. 
then you can't just say, oh, I have no experience. So I think for, that was like, that was like um, very profound for me. And it really changed my mind, especially when I come across some certain jobs and I see how many years experience. And if I always tell you, I always tell you, apply. There's no harm in applying because sometimes you, you are so fixated on the number they put there, but then put yourself in the shoe of the recruiter. Why they put that number is to be sure that you have skin in the game, to be sure that you can do the work. So it's, it's more like, you know, the number is just there to prove a point that, okay, this guy, you know, can do something, has done something in the past. You can even find, you will be shocked to find people who even have 10 years experience, but in those 10 years, how much work have they put in? So you come from an angle where, you know what, I don't have, you know, 20 years experience, but look at what I've done. Look at the tangible things I can bring, I bring to the table. Look at how I can help you, look at how I can help your company. So it was just that, um, um, you know, wealth of experience that was a major blocker for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's good to know. Steven, do you want to share any misconception you had and what you think about the misconception now? Um, I, I don't think I had any very, very fearful or challenging one at that point because I felt like I could actually achieve and I already had a background in, um, computer science and engineering that fair but the thing that was you know that's kind of stressed me out at that point was, was when I came to the UK and there is just this whole thing about people doing social media videos and being like UK is hard is this is that is you know what I mean and it's difficult to get a professional job when you're here but see when I started doing all these things and learned the tricks and tons and of how to go about this whole job market in the UK I'll tell you what I've got very I've got decent, I've, ever since I've been here, I've not gone, I've not worked in the office before. I work from the comfort of my home and it's very, very difficult for someone who have just gone through a platform like Analytics or someone who have not got that work experience, but you're getting job remotely. Every employer wants you on site. If you're still like, um, if you don't have that five, 10 years experience, everybody wants you on site, isn't it? They want to see monitor what you're doing but the way i presented myself and the way in fact the, the second job i got wasn't even a remote job but you see when i got a job i said to them look if i want to work here i cannot come into the office because it's in england i live in scotland i cannot come into the office um two times a week i could do one time a week and you know what they said to me like you know what we're happy with we one month a week we we started with one day a month to come into the office and that was it all my jobs i'm telling you are all remote jobs and these are things I felt like I couldn't achieve just because I don't have that 10 years experience. I'm not that data nerd. I'm not just this. I'm not just that. But getting a job in the UK is so difficult. Things that go around, people say, yes, you can get um, a very uh, office job. It's always menial jobs, care and blah, blah, blah. But I went through this, learned what I can say, what I should say on the interview, what I shouldn't say and how to articulate myself. And yeah, it's been, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm enjoying I cannot regret the day I met analytics or the day I spoke to FMNA and um, Adesa. I'm telling you, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot regret those days because they've actually, Adesa himself can tell you whenever I speak to him, like it's always, it's always, it's, see, if I remember that day, it's just wonderful because if I never took that decision, I just don't know what I would have been doing at this point. And yeah. I'm glad you made that decision. Yeah. And we hope that we well. this talk. That's the thing. I tell, I've done data analysis course with Analytics, got experience for probably two years or so, and I still came back to do data science. And I finished data science. Yeah, I think you all know I've finished data science. And it's it's just that growth, you know, you want to achieve more. And these people make you hungry to achieve more. You keep want to, you still want to do more, you still want to like get all the knowledge you feel you can. And uh yeah, so everything is achievable if just um if you set the time, perseverance breeds success. That's what I would say. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I can. I think I can relate with you, Stephen. I'm actually on yeah. the second program. So. Oh, nice. Thank you for the wise words. Perseverance <laughs> breeds. Breeds what again? Not success. Like success is from this water. Oh. So yeah. <laughs> All right, that's good. Um, hi, Michael. Do you want to share any misconception you had and um, what your thoughts are on these misconceptions now? Oh, oh, oh. I, I I can't really say it's a misconception, but I think uh, during my... Can you hear me? We can hear you. 
Okay, good. I think during my NYC days, I was uh, <clears throat> I made an attempt to learn programming, basically the front end, and I I was doing self learning. So when I got to Java, the whole thing got scattered, you know, turned upside down, and I was trying to look around if I could get a training center to to push it further. The reason why I made I, I refer to that instance is when I started, when I started with analytics, I felt and I had oh we will be doing Python as a data scientist, and I just flashed back to that NYC days memory that me that I left because of Java. Now I want to do Python. I felt <laughs> let me just. The old, the old journey was just like play, to be honest. It was just like, oh, let me just give it a try. When I get stuck, I will go back. And every day, you know, when I'm anticipating that, oh, we're having class tomorrow, it's just like tomorrow should just come right now. And by the time we go to, by the time we go to SQL, and I was able to cope with SQL, I understand SQL. Even in my, in my new role now, what I've been using for the past six weeks I've started, it's basically SQL. So when we got to SQL and I was able to understand SQL, I think the lady they brought to teach us SQL the first day, she said something like, um, if you are learning all this language, it's just like uh, when you are in the uni, you are trying to learn French, you are trying to learn Spanish, that all these things are, they are, they are like all those languages. So the moment you understand or, or you are Yoruba person and you are able to speak English, you learned that. It didn't come from heaven. So the moment you're able to learn all these languages, there is nothing in this tech world you cannot do. So I I, I head on to that world, and I was able to capture what SQL is all about. So by the time we started Python, the interest was fully built up. So that was like a turning point for me that, oh, okay, if I could do this SQL, then I should be able to do this Python as well. Then, And that was how we, you know, roll and roll and roll and did all those things. And after Ten Analytics, I still went ahead to buy some courses to, you know, to build up on what I've learned so far. So I think the the that's why I said initially that I don't really think there is any misconception, but the only misconception I had was within myself that I couldn't learn Java in some years back. How do I want to cope with SQL? And uh, but the way uh, Ten Analytics, you know, structured everything, I was able to overcome that particular. Thought. And uh, another thing I forgot to say is that I feel within myself I got value for my money at the end of first, at the end of Excel because I believe I know how to use Excel before I came to I, I joined analytics. So when we finish Excel, I feel even if I if I dropped out from this point, I got value for my money. I was not cheated. So you, you understand. So when I when we started Tableau, SQL, and uh, Python, it's just like a it's more or less like a uh, like Jara, you know what is called Jara, just like an extra dose for me. So more or less like an extra dose for me after Excel. So that's just it. All right, Mike. Mike, you well. Uh... That, that's very good to know. Thank you for sharing. So again, to you, Michael, do you have, um, so for people that are considering joining analytics, picking up a, a tech career path or, you know, enrolling in a similar training program, what's, advice do you have for them in um you know two sentences or thereabouts yeah i feel it's the best decision anyone could make just like i do tell people around me is it's not about you getting a job to be honest it changes your perspective about life when you when you have this skill you walk around the streets you imagine a lot of things you see things you put a plus b you realize that it gives you something not like, oh, A plus B is equal to C. There are so much you can get from A plus B. So when, when you have this data knowledge or when you have whatever course you enroll for, it changes your understanding about life, about business, about how people run their business, how people manage their business. You know, you keep on seeing people trying to like, oh, we are, doing, we are trying to improve, we are doing sales, we are doing promotion. These are, real, these are practical example of input, of output of what people have sat down in one corner to do from their own analysis that for this business to grow, you guys need to do this. For this business to do this, you have to. So you, you, you don't even, at some point, my own perspective is, when, in my business, before I joined the analytics, I used to write my, uh, my business record. I used to write it in a paper. But now, I put everything in Excel. My wife can access it wherever she is. So it makes life more easier for me. 
even without me getting a job at that point, it has already helped my business. I can know I know how to channel my my resources. I don't mismanage my resources in terms of advertisement. You understand? So the self development and improvement in my own life is more than enough. It's even much more for me before I even got a job. That oh, just to complement what I've been able to you know I've been able to achieve over the time. So the the best advice I can give anyone is enroll, stay focused. The truth of the matter is. I think in my class we were 60 something. And before we finish, some people were not coming again. The discouragement will come. A lot of things will get you discouraged. The environmental factor will discourage you. People living in the, in Africa, you will have challenges with network, you have challenges with life. But try as much as possible to overcome that challenge. That is the most important thing. It's not only about you paint analytics, it's about you making a difference in your life. So all those challenges that will come, envisage them, plan how you want to play around them. So it doesn't come to you as a shocker. You know already that all, oh, I will suffer light, make provision. You know already that there will be network problem, make provision. If you are in UK, if you are in Canada or anywhere, you will go for shift, plan it. Those are the days you normally go for, break it down for now. Those $2,000, sorry, $200, $300 shoe you buy, cut it down for now. It's just for a while. My own journey was about four or five months before I got my first job. So and that's the end. It has been you no know, improvement, no more learning. It's not learning now. It's improvement. Improvement on what I've known and advancement of what I know. It's not like I'm learning. I have to, it's not like I have to go and sit down somewhere and be watching six hours video or anything. It's just for me to improve on what I know now. I'm not, it's not as if I have to go to and start looking, how do I put this in? How do I put it in? You know, these things. The knowledge is there already. I don't have to go back to the basics anymore. So my advice is just do your background check. Know the one that best work for you, that suits for your style, your lifestyle, and the one you have passion for. Then put in for it. Thank you. Okay, that was very, um, that was a lot. Thank you so much for sharing, Michael. And I hope everybody got you know, one or two things from what you said. So, Joel, do you want to give any advice to anybody who's looking to enroll um, in any of the programs? Yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to start by saying that um, currently, and this is no hype, currently, I don't think there's any any institution that is doing better than analytics in terms of data. I don't think there's any. You could, you could name the top ones that you know. I don't think there's any at all. So Tanitis is doing such a great job. And I and, and the reason why you would have us here is, is is evidence to that. I mean, maybe you don't know, nobody's paying us to be here. But because of the quality of the things we have gotten, that's why we can come here and say, you know what, analytics is it. But the, the twist to this is, like what I said, when Femina said the easiest thing to do is to pay the money. I would just say this straight up because this is no marketing gimmick. If you're not going to put in the work, then don't pay the money. Don't waste your money. If you know you're not ready, you know, to put in the work, to attend the classes, to do your assignment, to do the capstone project. You just, this is just another session you'll be attending. Another, probably another course you're paying for, you're not going to maximize. So my advice would be simple. Just tell yourself, this time around, I'm putting, giving it my best. Like Michael has already said, plan yourself, set out, don't begin to give excuses when the classes start. You already have the curriculum in you. you probably, I, mean, I think they share the curriculum or something like that, Danny. So you already have it beforehand. So you can, you know, begin to look at it. These are the times of the classes. Don't come to the class and start saying, you know what, the time is not coming for me. When you already knew that this is what is obtainable. So just give it the best that you can't give it. And who knows? Tomorrow you might be the one coming here to host the class for other people. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Joel. Uh, hi, Steven. Do you want to share your advice to anybody who's looking to also transition and enroll for any of the programs? Yeah, my 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 one will not be an advice, it's a warning. <laughs> and what I mean by a warning is act now, take those decisions right now, sit yourself down, check what you can do. The curriculum is out there like a like a previous speaker spoke. See what is there, do your research, know what you can you can learn, what it feels like, you know what you can YouTube is there, there are ample sources of information there. The internet is your best friend. Check what you can do, what you can do, and enroll. I have this friend of mine, when I enrolled, I asked him, because I did my master's in the UK, and I asked him back then, I said to him, let's do this thing together. And he was like, 
what he said to me was, who are the people hosting it? And I said to him, they are Nigerians. And he says to me, in quotes, or more, how Nigerian person won't help me get work for UK. And right now, whenever he sees me, he regrets. He keeps telling me like, I wish I joined your part. I wish I joined your part. I'm saying this not to put him down or talk him down. Bless him. But he's not got a professional job up until this day. As sad as it may sound, but this is this is just the real truth, you know? So guys, go on there, look at the curriculum, see what you can do. If it's business analyst, speak to people. I feel like people, turn analytics, because before I paid, I, I decided, to, I requested that I must speak with someone first and let them tell me a brief overview of what the course entails. And I got that meeting with um, Adeza. He called me personally on that, I think Saturday morning. Or Friday morning and we spoke and he told me the different ones we, we had the discussion and he advised okay you know what do this do that this one if this is your level of understanding this should be best for you right now and yeah it worked and he's always been there whenever I need him or to speak to him about something the people here are nice they teach you about packaging packaging is very very essential in the job market I don't know how Nigeria may be but I think in 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 places like UK, Canada, packaging is a very, very, is a very, very, is a very, very mandatory thing you must, you must do. What I mean by packaging is your LinkedIn, how you speak, how you articulate yourself to job interviewers. These are things that will actually give you the job. It's not about just having the knowledge or Excel can do A plus B plus C. It's how do you place it to the person you're speaking to. And these are things that I've learned from here. So like I said, it's not an advice, it's a warning. Your time starts now. Do do what you can do right now. Make hay while the sun shines, okay? Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Joel, Steven, uh, Michael, it has been an amazing pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you for all the advice and also sharing your experience with us, okay? We really appreciate you coming and we look forward to seeing you around. All right. I think I think someone is trying um, to ask a question. Can you hear me? You look, okay. yeah, I think some lucky guy. I you is... Can you hear me? I think some guy oh, has raised his hand right? to, yeah. to ask a question. Yeah. Hi, Steven. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, yeah. I think I saw Lucky's hand, but we'll most likely take it in the end so that okay, we don't. Okay. 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 All right. So, Lucky, what, what you can do for us is just pull down your question, and we are going to take it by the time that we end the entire session. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, Adam Lala, I don't know whether this might cue. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Thank you, guys. Have a very good evening. Yeah. Bye. All right, thank, thank you, you Thank you, Joel. And thank you, Michael. It's already, always amazing having you guys on the call to talk to uh, the prospective people that want to um, join Analytics. Okay, so then I'm going to share my screen so that I'll bring up uh, for people to understand how they can transition to this exact um, tech ecosystem. All right, so in a couple of minutes, my screen will be up. Okay, but guys, if you are still here up to this moment, you followed us till this very time, please, can I see a reaction in the chat box? Put your favorite emoji so that I'll be sure that there are people that are still following us till this very minute, okay? So if you are still here with us, just drop your favorite emoji in the chat box, and I'll be sure that there are still people following us right here. Okay, I can see MTs uh, giving me chop knuckle, amazing. Amazing, that's fantastic. All right, I'm going to bring up my screen right now. <clears throat> okay, so uh, quickly, uh, we're just going to walk you through um, the career pathways that you can easily transition through uh, for, uh, here at Analytics. And what we tend to do most time is to bring out the best tech career pathways that will land you a job the fastest, all right? And it's also uh, a pathway that promises to also grow in the future and how do we make this to happen okay how do we make it happen so by the end of each year what we always do is that we look at the world economic forum reports all right the world economic forum report so please um guys if you've not filled the attendance form please ensure that you fill it so that you get this slide and also the recording that we are using for this exact session okay so please ensure that you fill the attendance form so they can get the slide and also the recording of this session all right, so there in the slide, you also get to um, you know, click on the links because we've already attached it for you to also do your own background work. 
So uh, what Economic Forum reports, what they do each year is that they look at the jobs that are going to grow and jobs that are going to decline, right? And if you look at the left-hand side, you are going to see jobs that are going to be in high demand in the coming years. And on the right-hand side, you are going to see the jobs that are going to decline. Okay, Rich is asking how. All right, so my colleague is going to drop the attendance link, or if you scroll up, you're going to see the link. Just click on it and fill the attendance form, okay? All right. <clears throat> so the jobs on the right, on the left-hand side are jobs that are going to be in high demand in the coming years. And the first amongst them is AI and machine learning specialists. So you agree with me that AI is the new everything at the moment. Any single job that you are doing, there's always an atom of AI that's attached to it. Today, if you want to make posts on LinkedIn, there's already AI attached. If you want to do anything, there's AI. Even here in analytics, if you are learning with us, we also have our own AI that we built in the house to also help you optimize in everything that you are doing. So I'm going to bring up that AI shortly so that we also get to see how we can leverage the analytics platform. Now, the AI and machine learning is also infused in all the courses. You are going to get an atom of AI in all the courses that you will be learning. And of course, when we talk about machine learning specialists, we're talking about the data scientists, right? These are guys that will tell you the future, okay? So just take note of the jobs that we have highlighted. The AI machine learning specialists, business intelligence specialists, information security analysts, data analysts and scientists, big data specialists, data engineers, and process automation specialists. So we have a reason why we highlighted these exact jobs, because one thing is very, very important, your ability to learn, your ability to learn it easily, and then to easily transition into the tech ecosystem and also promise you high and rewarding salary. So there are courses that if you decide to go into, the turnaround time for you to be able to get the full knowledge that you need and for you to now join the ecosystem might take you years, right? So what we'll try to do is to pick the courses that is going to give you the ease of learning, ease of transitioning, and of course, high rewarding salaries. Okay, so moving on, you're going to see also project managers, financial analysts, supply chain and logistics specialists. So all these are jobs that are going to be in high demand in the coming years. And why this is very, very key is because this is where people are transitioning to. This is where companies, this is where organizations are looking out for prospective people. And we have selected these courses to offer to people to lend them. And the reason why we selected those basic eight, like I mentioned before now, is ease of learning, ease of transitioning, high and rewarding salary. And the courses are business analysts, data analysts, data scientists, <clears throat> data engineer, cybersecurity analysts, project management, which is Scrum Master, HR analyst, and of course, the financial analyst. So I'm going to also break down what each of these eight courses entail. What do they do? Which skills do you need to have for you to be able to play fully in this exact domain, all right? But before we go into it, if you've already made uh, a choice, if you've selected the area you want to transition through, please just type it in the chat box. This is the course I want to do, just type in data analysis or business analysis, any of those courses that you've already decided, this is where I want to transition into the tech ecosystem from, please do well to type it in the chat box so that I also know where our audience are fully tilted to work. I can see Pavel, Pavel said data analyst, you can see the bridge, the bridge said data science, fantastic. So we have data analysts, prospective data analysts, we have prospective data scientists, data analysis, business analysis, cybersecurity analysis, cybersecurity, BA, amazing, amazing. So it's really fantastic that you've already made a selection of the course that you want to do, right? Because it's very, very, very important with respect to your journey, right? Because there is what we call the sixth pillar of your job success. And number one of that exact pillar is identifying your target role. Okay, so for you to take this journey with us, for you to be able to land that job that you are looking for, we've created six pillars to, for you to be successful. And number one amongst it is identify your target role. 
And if you've already identified your target role, congratulations, you've ticked the first journey, all right? You've ticked the first aspect that is going to lead you to your own success. But if you've not, fret not, I'm going to walk you through each of those areas so that I can be able to identify the one that suits you most, okay? So like, like I mentioned, the first step is you identifying your target role. The second step is you educating yourself, okay? And that is by enrolling with a learning partner, right? So, and what this promises to give you is to give you a curated, streamlined learning. Some of us struggle to break into the tech ecosystem because anything that comes out, MongoDB is coming out, we jump in and learn, Luca will come out, we jump in and learn. But are these the tools that the companies you are looking forward to? Is it the tool that they are using, right? So it's very important for you to join a learning, a learning platform like us that is going to give you a curated learning specifically to the industry standard so you will learn with the experts. Number three is gain project-based experience, right? Gain project-based experience. The tech ecosystem is always moving with this exact acronym is competence over certification, right? It is competence over certification. And what this means is that even if you have a, a certification from IBM, from Google, from Microsoft, from all the companies you can think of, but you do not know how to use the exact tool for your own domain, nobody is going to take you in, right? So nobody is going to take you in. This is why some people actually struggle to land a job, right? You've jumped, you've gotten certifications, but you do not know the skill, you do not know the tools that is necessary for you to survive in that exact domain. Definitely, you are going to struggle. But with the analytics, you also get to learn with project-based experiences. Because all the courses that we offer, each key learning area that you're going to be having is structured in a way that you learn it using real-life case studies. You learn it using real-life case studies. And how do we do this? Because we also play in the contractual space, when we get contractual jobs, what we do is to codify it and also give to our students to work on, right? Which means indirectly, you are working on a real life project. And these are things that you're going to put in your portfolio so that by the end, when a recruiter picks up your portfolio, they can comfortably say, okay, Chukwemeka has experience with respect to the health, health industry, has experience with respect to the aviation, has experience with respect to FMCG. And these are project-based experience that you were able to acquire. Now, after these first three stages, we now move you towards getting the employability skills that you need to survive. I think it's either Michael or Stephen that mentioned that what they also love about analytics is that they don't just give you the skill and the experience. They teach you also how to package yourself. Remember, your CV is definitely going to get to any company you intend to work with before you can come in. Your CV is like a working signboard of you. So it would help you, teach you how to build a tailored CV and also how to optimize your LinkedIn so that recruiters reach out to you. And of course, gain interviewing skills. How do you use the seat and staff framework during your interviews? And number five, which is networking, all right? Online community like us will also provide you with opportunities to network with people across the globe. We've had instances where a student will get a job, but there are still other offers coming to them. What they do at that point is they reach out to their recruiters and say, I already have an offer. Do you mind if I recommend someone for this role? All right? And most time, they recommend people in the same class with them. And these are things that networking is going to provide to you. Number six is mentorship. Mentorship is very, very critical for your transitioning journey because you are going to be hearing from experts they are going to speak to you from experience experience of what is going on in the industry so with these six exact pillars for your job success once you are able to move from number one to number six there's an assurance that you are definitely going to land a job all right but like um i think steven mentioned you also need to be able to put in the effort all right uh, I think, okay, it's Joel, it's Joel that mentioned that you need to put in the effort. It doesn't stop at enrolling, it doesn't stop at making payments. That is just the beginning of your journey. You need to put in the effort for you to move from level one to level six. 
right? So how can you get into any of these career paths? So in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to walk us through the eight career paths that I've mentioned and what each of them entails, okay? So if you've not made decision for the career path you want to transition through, just get a pen and paper and write down the points I'll be making so that you can be able to make your decision. Number one, number one is business analysis. And that is business analyst. If you want to be a business analyst, what does it entail? First, you are going to serve as a bridge between the non-technical team and the technical stakeholders. Right? So what this means is that you are going to be interfering between the CEOs, the CFOs, the CCOs, all the C's that you can possibly think of, and the technical team, the data analyst, the um, software developer, the scrum master, everyone. So you are the bridge between these guys and the technical team. And your role fully is to ensure effective communication and understanding of the business requirements, right? So anything that the business wants to, uh, wants to carry out, you need to ensure that there is effective communication between the stake, um, st stake stakeholders and the technical team. And what are the key learning areas that you will have? I'm going to skip number one, we'll come back to it. So starting from number two, you're going to learn process mapping. What exactly is process mapping? How do you optimize processes currently existing in a business? For example, using the banking sector, if, if you live in Nigeria before now, because uh, I, I used to work in the bank, right? So once you walk into the man trap door, the first thing you're going to experience is a long queue coming from the teller point towards the man trap door. And what business analysts now saw is how do we make this process to be streamlined? How do we streamline it? Before now, you walk in, you queue up, get to the teller point, you pick a form, you go to the desk, fill the form, queue up again, get to the teller point and perform your transaction. But then how to announce, okay, we need to introduce what we call the form box or the form shelf, where once you walk into the mantra door, you are picking up a form. Even some banks went to the extent of, okay, we need to position someone at the mat trap door that once you are walking in, someone is asking you, what do you want to do? And they're handing you the form over. Now, once you've secured the form, you just fill it, queue up and perform your transaction. This is them optimizing the exact process that is existing. So as a business analyst, you need to be able to understand the customer journey in that exact business. All the touch points that the customer is going to uh, you know, encounter you need to be able to understand them. And from there, you're not going to say, we need to remove this or we need to add this to make it more you know, streamlined, to make the customer's journey faster and more successful. Number two is project initiation planning. As a business analyst, we are going to be in meetings where there will be talks about, we need to start this in this company, we need to do this, we need to do that. And that is you going to spare head of some of those projects, which means you need to understand what do we need to put into place for this business, for this project to kick off? So you need to understand that exact process and also understand the Agile and Scrum for projects. Remember, under project management, we have the waterfall and we have the Agile methodology. Basically, waterfall talks about the traditional means and Agile is about the modern means of project management. And we are going to walk you through Agile and Scrum for projects. Also, you get to learn software development lifecycle, requirements, fundamentals, elicitation method. How do you get information from your stakeholders? Okay, and also stakeholder analysis and engagement, and of course, chat GPT for business analysis. Now, let me go back to number one. After you've also gotten these business analyst skills, we also equip you with Excel for analysis, Power BI for analysis, and of course, SQL for database management. And these are core data analytics tools, but you will also get to learn them. And what this provides you with is that you can successfully work as a business analyst and you can also successfully work as a data analyst. So what we tend to brand this role is business data analyst because you have the knowledge of the tools that a data analyst is using. And once you go in depth in it, you can definitely land roles in this exact domain. We've had instances where after Excel, people are already getting jobs and they come to us and say, okay, oh, I want to be able, I want to switch to data analyst now because I've already secured a job using just the Excel knowledge. How do I go about it? So if you are able to 
capture those initial three tools that you'll be learning, Excel, Power BI, and SQL, you can also fully function as a data analyst. The learning timeline for business analysis is for four months, where you learn immersively in the classroom for two months with us, and then you intern with us for the other two months where you're going to be managing a web app development project. Now, let me shock some of you. The experience that Joel, Steven, and Michael had during their own training phase is already a times two what you are going to have. So if they were able to have such amazing experience, just imagine the kind of experience that you also also is going to experience because we've also introduced new things into the program that they didn't even have the opportunity to experience. So definitely you are getting things that is way more what more than what they experienced in their own time. So I'm sorry, Steven, Joe, and Michael, if you are still there, that were giving the other people much more than what you received your own time because we always make sure that we move with the trend of time. So depending on what our facilitators that come from amazing companies, what they are saying, okay, this is the trend that is currently existing, we need to move like this instantly, we implement these things. Now, you are going to be learning these things every Saturday and Sundays. So for business analysis, the class is Saturdays and Sundays, where it will have the morning class 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the evening class 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Then Sundays also have classes 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and in the evening you have classes 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. So we made this possible so that people in EU, people in UK, people in Africa can, confident, can comfortably join the morning classes while people in Canada, U.S. that is, that is with the mountain time can join the evening classes. So with the business analysis, you are going to be learning Excel, Power BI, SQL, Lucid Charts, Confluence, Jira for uh, your project management, Draw.io for your, pro uh, for your um, process mapping, and of course, ChatGPT. I hope you understand who a business analyst is right now. Now, the next is data analyst. Who is a data analyst, all right? So data analysts are people that bring out insights from data. For example, on this call, we are 50, and uh, data analysts can decide to analyze it. Okay, what's the core analysis of what we did today? We are 50, we had 40 people join us from UK, we had five from um, Canada, and we have maybe five from Africa. What does this mean, okay? So he's going to answer the question of what happened and why it happened, okay? He's going to answer the question of what happened, which is descriptive analytics, and why it happened, which is diagnostic analytics. These are the two basic questions that a data analyst will be working to answer for that exact company. So using our analogy, 50 people joined this call. He analyzed the call from the location data. He noticed that we had 40 people from UK. We had five from um, Canada. I will have the extra five from maybe Africa. And next question is, why did this happen? So he's going to do a further analysis using the other company data that exists. Possibly he can look at the marketing data and see, okay, um, for the last one week that we marketed in UK, maybe we did 50% uh, of marketing in UK and then the other 25 was channeled towards the African market and the other 25 towards the Canadian market, all right? So from that, you're already seeing the reason why we're having the exact location-based um, people with respect to what, why it's happening. Next thing that the company is now going to do is, if you want to have more Africans living in Africa or more people in Canada, what we need to do also is to channel more marketing, more marketing um, uh, funds into the Canadian markets, right? And these are things, these are insights that a data analyst is going to bring out. So in a short while, I also show us some of the portfolios that some past students were able to work with. So what a data analyst is going to be learning, the key learning area for you as a data analyst is number one, problem solving. Because as a data analyst, it's not about the amazing visuals that you're coming up with. What the company wants you to do is to solve problems for them, right? And that is why we're going to walk you through the various frameworks that will enable you to solve problems, the crisp DM and so on and so forth. And then after that, we'll now walk you through Excel. How do you clean data? How do you analyze data? How do you build Power, power Pivot? How do you build dashboard with Excel? We are going to walk you through this, how you can comfortably use Excel to work as a data analyst. And after that, we'll now walk you through SQL, Structured Query Language. How do you query a database 
to bring out data from there and then analyze it as a data analyst. As you grow in your role, there's tendency you are going to work with a company that is very robust, that is maybe using a Postgre, right? Definitely they will have a database they are working with. And as a data analyst, you need to be able to query that exact database and bring out data and analyze it. So that is what SQL is going to put you through. And then Power BI, how do you analyze multiple rows of data and then bring out amazing visuals from it using Power BI? We'll walk you through this same as Tableau. We're going to walk you through how you can use Tableau to also analyze data and bring out fantastic insights from it. Afterwards, we'll also walk you through how do you tell your story? Because what we've noticed is that you may have this skill, but you lack the data storytelling skill, okay? Which means you cannot comfortably move from point A to point B. But as a data analyst, it's very, very critical for you to be able to tell your story from point A to point B, and everything is going to tie it together. And these are things that we also get to walk you through in the classroom. They will talk you through chat GPT for analytics, and of course, Microsoft Fabrics for analysis. Your key learning timeline is for four months where you learn immersively in the classroom for three months and then you intern with us for one month where you also get to work on other case studies that you are going to put in your portfolio. The class is on Saturdays alone, morning and evening, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. West African time and of course 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. West African time. Then on Sundays, you would get what we call the watch me do it videos. These are videos that you just 10 to 15 minutes to introduce you into deeper concepts that you just get to watch and prep for the next week classes. So what this means is that Saturdays, you have a live class. Sundays, you get a short bite videos for you to watch within the week and prepare for the other class that exact Saturday. So it's just like a moving trend. Come to class live, then watch the videos during the week and they're coming to a live class again. So you're definitely going to learn tools, um, Excel, SQL, Tableau, Microsoft Fabrics, ChatGPT, Power BI, and of course, your problem solving. So I'm um, skill, I mean. Then who is a data scientist? Who is a data scientist? So I prefer to always call this guy the future tellers. They tell you what is going to happen in future, right? And how do they make this happen? Remember, a Data analyst answers two basic questions, the descriptive and the diagnostic. Okay, and that's what happened. Okay, since somebody is, okay, that's Michael. What Hi. happened and why it happened? Hi, Demi, I think someone is speaking in the background. What happened and why it happened? That's the question that a data analyst will be answering. But a scientist will go a step further to do what we call predictive analysis, right? You go a step further to Sorry, I think someone muted me, all right? So a data scientist will go a step further to perform what we call the predictive analysis, to be able to tell what will happen. And the key learning area that is going to help you make this happen is number one, statistics. You are going to be learning descriptive statistics and of course, probability statistics. When we talk about these things, it's not just you coming to class to learn the main medium mode or possibly learning about testing and so on and so forth. You are going to learn it using case studies, okay? You are going to use case study based learning to enable you to be able to come up, work on a case study, for possibly um, analytics is trying to maybe um, increase the number of facilitators, and this is what we have, this is what we have. How do you, as a data scientist, predict the number of facilitators that they need to have by December for them to be able to cater for their growing students? These are things that you will be working on. Real life case studies, that is going to be very, very impactful for your own portfolio. Then of course, you now move into forecasting and predictive analytics using Excel, where you learn your time series analysis, your regression analysis, of course, also using a case study to learn them. Then you, you learn tablet for data analysis. How do you connect to data sources, several data sources? How do you create visuals that is going to bring out insights? And before you now move on to SQL, which is basically you learning how to use the basic command, basic queries like select, insert, update, etc. for you to be able to perform analysis. And of course, you learn your Python programming. 
So if you are someone that is looking towards going to coding aspect, you should be looking at towards data science because you'll be learning Python programming. How do you write your basic syntax? How do you write your functions and modules for you to be able to come up with amazing insights? Then you walk through exploratory data analysis where you learn your data cleaning, identifying patterns, and of course the outliers. How can you be able to identify these things from your data set? Then you also learn machine learning where you learn your supervised machine learning, your regression, your classification, then your unsupervised learning where you learn clustering, etc. So these are things that will equip you with to make sure that you can be able to predict the future. Remember, the most important question that you'll be answering as a data scientist is predictive question, um, based questions of what will happen. Then you now also learn your computer vision where you also learn image processing, object detection, for you to be able to build a, a co um, code system that will be able to identify facial, uh, facial uh, recognition and so on and so forth. And then you also learn your GitHub and of course, ChatGPT and Microsoft Fabrics for Analytics. So for data science, the learning timeline is for four months where you learn it massively in the classroom for three months and then intern with us for one month. Then the class holds every Saturday 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. West African time, and in the evening time also, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. West African time. And then on Sundays, you get your Watch Me Do It videos where you get to learn other deeper concepts. You're going to be learning tools like Tableau, SQL, Excel, um, statistics, Python, Microsoft Fabrics, and of course, um, machine learning and chat GPT for data science. Then who is a data engineer? Right, so these are amazing guys that's always in the back end drawing up the architecture. So I always liken them to the plumber in the construction industry. So the way a plumber builds the pipeline to connect the water system to the sewer, connect the um, the kitchenette, connect the shower, connect everything down to the septic tank. That's how the data engineer on a daily basis is building pipeline to connect different systems to each other. All right, you can decide to build uh, a pipeline to connect the websites to the database so that the information can easily flow from the website straight to the database. So the data engineer is someone that connects all the different architectures that exist and make sure that the data flows easily and is made available for the analysts or the, for the scientists for them to be able to work with it. And the key learning area you're going to be having is, of course, your data uh, introduction to data engineering where we definitely walk you through what is data architecture in the first place, what is data lifestyle, life cycle management. Because you need to be able to understand these things for you to understand how you can curate a great architecture for the business. And you're also going to be learning SQL for you to be able to manage the database very well. And of course, Python programming, like I mentioned, we are going to learn the different um, syntax and libraries that for data engineers like the Pandas or NumPy, for you to be able to code effectively. You're also going to be learning the Linux operating system where you get to learn the basic Linux commands and the process management entirely for Linux. And of course, you will learn how to build custom ETL pipeline. So when we talk about ETL, it is basically extract, transform, and load, all right? Extract, transform, and load. For example, in the last couple of weeks, um, if, you, if you follow the Nigerian Twitter space very well, you notice that there was a big trend with respect to Chivido when Davido got um, married to um, um, Choma, right? So at that point, some people were able to scrape data, okay, um, from Twitter, from Instagram, from Facebook, the number of times that maybe Chivido was mentioned, and so many things. And what, how do you do this? Once you get the API of those platforms, API of Instagram or API of Twitter, if Elon Musk allows you, of course, you just use it, connect it to your um, Jupyter Notebook and run your Python programming there. Instantly, it's going to scrape all the data of the times that Chibido was mentioned. And you now, once you are performing your transformation using your Jupyter Notebook, afterwards, you load it to your database for the data analyst to now have access to all the times that this is what we are mentioned. So these are what companies use on a daily basis to connect your website to the database and so on and so forth. And how do you automate this process? That is where Apache Spark and Apache Airflow comes in. How do you 
uh, it automates that exact data pipeline. You're also going to be learning, of course, AWS Cloud Engineering, basically, how do you utilize the Amazon Web Services to deploy, to manage, and to scale your data? So these are things that we will definitely walk you through. And of course, based on control using GitHub and ChatGPT for data engineers. So for data engineering, the learning timeline is for five months. So the learning timeline for data engineers is for five months, which means you're going to be learning a massively in the classroom for three months, and then you have an internship experience with us for two months. So the class is on Saturdays, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. West African time. And on Sundays, you get your Watch Me Do It videos also. All right, so you have several tools you're going to be learning, the Apache Spark, GitHub, AWS, SQL, Python, and so on and so forth. So we have these other guys, the financial analysts, all right? The financial analyst, who is basically someone that makes sense of the financial data that the company has. So you agree with me that no matter the role that you play in the company, there is one thing that is constant. We need to make profit. The company needs to make profit, unless you are in the business of maybe a non-governmental organization that is just providing services for uh, maybe um, community service generally. But most companies, they are in business to make profit. And someone needs to be able to analyze that exact financial data and make sense of it. And that is where a financial analyst comes in. What are you going to be learning? Basically, you walk, we walk you through the same thing a data analyst will learn, which is problem solving, Excel, Power BI, and SQL. So after these four exact pro, um, stages, why data analyst is going deeper into data analysis, learning with other tools, learning and going deeper and or becoming a subject matter expert in that area, you are streamlining yourself towards accounting fundamentals. And then you are going to tilt towards financial analysis and financial modeling. How do you build models that is going to tell you, okay, this is cost of goods sold, this is our EBITDA, this is our profits, and so on and so forth. And you can comfortably tell, okay, in Q1, because we did this, because our capex as capital expenditure and because our OPEX uh, operational expenditure is this, and so on and so on and so forth, we made maybe a profit of this. Q2, this happened, we made some profits. Q3, if we do not change what has been happening, we are going to make so so and so profit or loss. So you are the one that is going to bring out insights from the financial data that the company has and be able to advise management effectively. So these are things that you are going to be doing as a financial analyst. The tools you are going to be learning definitely is problem solving, Excel, Power BI, SQL, and of course, ChatGPT for analytics. And the learning timeline is for four months also, where you learn massively in the classroom for three months and you intern with us for one month. The class holds every Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the evening, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Then on Sundays, you get your Watch Me Do It videos. All right? So we also have the HR analysts. These are the guys that make sense of the people data. All right? They analyze the people data and be able to come up with insight from that the people data to advise the management effectively. So you're also going to be learning everything that a data analyst learns in that first four um, areas, which is problem solving, Excel, Power BI, and SQL, before you now tilt towards HR analytics and performance evaluation. How do you use all those tools that you've learned Excel to build a performance evaluation data? And of course, HR metrics and life cycle, HR analysis and dashboarding, and collaboration and report automation. How do you make sense of the people data that you have? The learning timeline is for four months, where you learn effectively um, in the classroom for three months, and then you intern with us for four months. The class holds every Saturdays, morning 11 to 2 p.m. West African time, evening 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. West African time. And on Sundays, you also get the Watch Me Do It videos that is going to introduce you into the back concept. All right, so if you have any question, please just put it down. Right. So in the next couple of five minutes, I'm going to be over with the eight programs and we are going to take your question. Okay, So just write it down and we'll definitely take your questions. Next one is the Agile Project Manager, where people also refer to them as Scrum Masters. Who is an Agile Project Manager? So this is someone that facilitates or coaches the team that works on projects using the Agile methodology. 
right? So what he does is to make sure that everything that they're going to do is it conforms with the agile methods that has been propounded, all right? And your key learning area is, of course, we're going to introduce you to project management, walk you through the skills and communications that you need to function effectively as an APM. And of course, you get to learn foundations of Agile and Scrum. How do you make use of Ad Scrum and Agile to function effectively? You learn the Scrum artifacts, your increments, your sprint and product backlog. For example, when you want to start off a project, let's assume you want to cook jollof rice, right? What are those ingredients that you need before you can cook your jollof rice? This is basically you talking about your product backlog. You, the product you want to bring into market is jollof rice. Your product backlog is now the ingredients that you need for you to bring that product to life. And that is how it is in the project management space, where if you want to build something like a mobile app, maybe a financial app, first thing first, want to build your user sign-on. So if you atomize things that you need, user sign-on. So under user sign-on, you get to understand what is the acceptable criteria for me to say, okay, user sign-on is complete, which means you need to have a username, you need to have a password. Then under it, you now talk about what's the length of this exact password? What's it going to be? The username is going to be a cap sensitive or just any, anything goes. So these are things that you are going to define as a Scrum Master, okay? Remember, you are not writing any single line of code. You are not going to do anything coding based. Yours is to coach the people that are going to do this. And how you implement it is fully by understanding the Scrum methodologies and artifacts that you are going to use to function effectively. So if you're looking to transition to a place where you do not have to write any single line of code, then um, Agile a uh, APM Scrum Master is the best for you. Then you also get to learn end to end how to how do you use Jira and Confluence to manage your projects. How do you prepare your Kaban board? So remember, under Agile project management, we have Scrum, we have Kaban, we have the Lean principles, and so on and so forth. So you are going to be learning the Kaban board. How do you mix of Kaban board? How do you use your uh, possibly your Trello or your Asana board to manage your teams effectively? So these are things that you will also learn. And of course, you learn the metrics and reporting the velocity charts, the burn up and burn down chart to know whether your team is being used effectively or whether they are being underused. And of course, as an APM, you are a leader in that exact space. So you need to learn your leadership and also the real world application of all, everything that you're going to work through. Before I'm walking through the Nexus scaled Scrum, and of course, it's going to prepare you to also take your professional Scrum Master examination. Right, so the learning timeline for the Scrum Master program is for four months, where you learn the master in the classroom for three months, and then you intern with us for one month and work on real life projects. The class is every Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Sundays, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. You're going to be learning the Confluence, which is a tool for project collaboration. And of course, you learn Jira and also Trello. Then the last but not the least is the cybersecurity guys. So what everyone is doing, someone needs to be able to secure that digital asset. And that is where your cybersecurity analyst come in. So as a cybersecurity analyst, your role is to ensure that the organization's digital assets, computer systems, and network, that it is, you know, um, it is comfortably secured and there is no outside threat towards it. And your key learning area is going to be, of course, foundations of computing and networking. I'll walk you through what is LAN, what is WAN, what is IP, what is computer in the first place, what is CPU. So even if you have zero knowledge of any of these domain, we'll walk you through from the ground level towards the expert stage for you to be able to comfortably perform uh, in that exact space. Before we now get you to introduction to cyber security, all right, and then walk you through information security principle, what, which we call the CIA triad. For you to effectively function as a cyber security person, you need to be able to understand the CIA triad, which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Because everything that you're going to be doing is hinged on this exact triad. Under encryption and encoding, you have it under confidentiality, under access control and so on and so you have it under availability. So these are things that we work through in the classroom. You're going to be also learning offensive and defensive cybersecurity, cryptographic basics. How do you 
block the man in the middle. And also cyber threat and attack vectors, network security, endpoint security, web and application security, cloud security, and of course, incident response and forensics. So what this means is that by the time you are done learning all this using case study-based learning, you can comfortably work as a cloud security engineer, as a network security engineer, as a web and application security person, as an incident responder, I can play in the um, policy aspect like myself and be a governance risk and compliance person. So the learning timeline for this is for four months where you learn massively in the class for three months and then you work on, you intern for one month where you also work on real life case studies. The classes is every, um, on Saturdays rather, morning 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., evening 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And on Sundays, you get your watch me do it videos. So you're going to be learning tools like the Wireshark, the Metasploit, Linux, Bobsuit, Zap, and so on and so forth that you are going to use to analyze threats. So we know most time people think that cybersecurity you need to be able to be writing codes. That is not entirely true. So what we do is also we teach you how do you leverage the existing tools like the VMware, the virtual box, to analyze threats and be able to prevent threats from happening. Sorry, please. Um, hi, Damila. Please confirm that I can still hear me. Hi, Damila. Please confirm that I can still hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. All right. Can I think because my second screen just went off, so I need to be sure. All right, that's fine. So, um, so next thing that I'm going to bring up right now is everything that we've talked about. How do you also get to optimize and by now you should be able to say okay this is where i want to transition through okay so by now you should be able to have made a decision that first decision of this is your chosen path so if you've not made that exact decision please please it's very important that you decide so if you've decided on where you want to transition through please just in the chat box just put it there so that i'll be sure that you have decided where you want to transition through. So if you've decided where you want to transition through, just type it in the chat box so that we'll be sure that you have already selected where you want to transition through. Don't know why my screen is not coming up anymore, damn Lola. Okay, I think it's up right now. Fantastic, I can see people, uh, okay. Not really, no, but I've, you guys have not made the decision of where you want to transition through. We've been able to, explain all the courses so right now you should be able to decide where you want to transition through okay i don't know why my second screen is taking time to come up okay data analysis fantastic i can see elijah elijah, elijah has decided to transition as a data analyst this is taking time to come up Okay, hi Damilola, please do mind sharing your own screen so that I can continue from there, all right, okay? But next thing that I want to talk to you about is that all these eight career paths that we've mentioned, it doesn't just mean that you only work, you get area for it as a data analyst or just as a data scientist or as a data engineer. There are several career paths that exist under each of those domains. Hi, Damila, please confirm you can hear me. I think I was thrown out of the meeting. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Chukumika, yes, we can hear you. All right, fantastic. So I was talking about several career paths that you can also easily get journey through after you are done training in all those areas. So what this means is that you can comfortably under data analysis, you see several areas that you can also get job in as a data analyst, as a business intelligence analyst, as a sales analyst. So there are several career paths that exist for you once you are done getting knowledge in all these tech stack. 
So it doesn't limit you to only one. So for example, under um, business analysis, you say that I can function as a business analyst, you can function as a business data analyst, and you can function as a business system analyst, and you can function as a can function as a uh, system um, fun uh, functions analyst, as a requirement analyst, as a change management analyst, and so on and so forth. So each of these learning career paths, you have several areas that you can decide to transition through. Under um, cybersecurity, you can decide that you want to transition as a SOC analyst, as a cybersecurity analyst, as a network security engineer, as a penetration tester, and several much more. So please ensure that you decide where you want to be able to make your journey through. So this is just a portfolio. So I'm just going to quickly show us one portfolio of um, the first person there, which is from Victoria. So we also get to see some of the things that you as a student is going to be working on. So as a student, once you are training with us, definitely you are going to be building your portfolio. This is, a, this is Victoria's portfolio as a data analyst. So during, while she was training with us, she worked on deep care hospital analysis, which is in the health sector. She also worked on Red Dot airline flights, which is in the aviation sector. She worked on express tech food, which is in the um, supply chain industry. She also worked on Nestle product analysis, which is in FMCG. She worked on Zen Electronics, which is in technology space, and she, well, okay, that's it. So she comfortably worked on five different sectors of the economy. Now, do you think that a recruiter is going to see this portfolio and not know that Victoria has an experience? So going um, into, um, let me just quickly bring up what she did with respect to deep care. You're going to see that under deep care, she analyzed the data using, I think, uh, she used Tableau to analyze what happened in the deep care in the, uh, in the health industry. So with this, the recruiter is going to comfortably know that Victoria has W skill and experience, and she also has experience in the health sector. And of course, you're going to see what she did with respect to the Red Dot airline using Excel. So she was able to analyze the aviation industry using Excel. So with, with this, a recruiter can also comfortably know that Victoria can comfortably build and bring out insights using Excel from the evidence that she is, so, is showing from the aviation industry. Which we also go to Express Tech, you also see what she did with respect to the Express Tech industry, which is in the supply chain ecosystem. So with this, do you think any recruiter is going to see everything that Victoria has worked on, the portfolios that she has, and is going to close an eye there? So. So far as this is what they are looking for, there's an evidence to show that Victoria has all the skill and experience they, they need. So guys, like I mentioned, please ensure you fill the attendance form so that you get to have access to this slide and get to walk through some of the portfolio of our past students. So moving on, initially, remember I mentioned to you that six basic pillars that is going to enable your transitioning journey. Once you've selected the exact place you want to transition through, you now select your learning partner, which is analytics. You also get your skill and experience by building that exact portfolio. The next one is to be able to model yourself to represent what your skill is showing. And that starts with CV review session, right? So we walk you through the CV review session for you to be able to build your CV to represent all the skill and experience that you have. It's one thing for you to have an experience. It's one thing for you to be able to put it in paper and be able to present. So we're going to teach you how you match your job, to how you match your skill to the job advert. So that, for example, if you see an advert that is asking for postgres knowledge and under your CV have SQL, the ATS, which is the applicant tracking system, is going to CV you out. So you need to be able to represent that you have that exact knowledge. And these are things that will walk you through in the CV review session. Of course, we also walk you through the LinkedIn optimization session how do you position yourself for recruiters to be reaching out to you? This is what we walk you through in the, in the session. Then if you want to play in the contractual space, you want to be in Nigeria and you are working for companies in UK, you are in Canada and so on and so forth. I think I, I, I love what Steven mentioned. Steven said uh, um, uh, uh, that his friend mentioned, Omo, how person for Nigeria won't help me in UK. 
But what people do not understand is that most time, some people actually get contractual roles while being their own company, right? And these are things that you're going to learn using the Upwork Optimizing Session, where you can comfortably be in Ghana, in South Africa, working for a company in UK, can be in UK, working for a company in Canada, and so on and so forth. And we also have teach you how to navigate the job market. There are several job markets that exist out there. It's not just LinkedIn or Glassdoor indeed. There are thousands, there are so many, let me not say thousand, there are so many job markets that exist. So during this exercise session, we bring in recruiters across the globe to also come to classroom and walk you through most of these platforms. And of course, we have the job and interview prep session where we teach you how to leverage the star and seat framework for your interview. I think Stephen also mentioned that today, he doesn't get scared of any interview. And that's because he's been able to master the star framework, which is situation, task, achievement, and results. How do you put this to be able to answer any question that comes to you, all right? Because most times I always tell people, less is more. You can say a lot of things during an interview session and you can, it's not really communicated. But once you're able to structure your responses using this framework, you can comfortably answer any question. And because you are working on case studies, real life projects, can comfortably say that you are a con you you are a consultant with the analytics, and that means we can provide recommendation and reference letter for you in the events that you are going for greater things. You got another job; they require a recommendation letter from us. We are also available to make sure that you get these things. We also have the weekly mentorship session where we bring in mentors to come to classroom and talk to you on things to experience in the industry, and we also provide on-the-job support, which means in the events that you receive a job and you still struggle on that role, we are available to make sure that we push you and help you on that exact job. And that brings me to the level three, which is our promise to you, that one month after you are done training with us, you must definitely get one job interview invitation. Definitely you will get one job interview invitation. And how do we do this? We we'll have what we we'll call a job tracker, where anyone that applies to jobs in our uh, insight analytics, right? We provide them a platform to also upload the several jobs that they are also applying to. And what we do is that once we look at that exact job tracker, I want to that maybe someone like um, let me use Chukwemeka. Chukwemeka has applied to maybe 50 jobs in the last week, and this is the second week, third week, and we didn't have any interview prep session with Chukwemeka. It means that something is fundamentally wrong with what Chukwemeka is doing. So at that point, we'll have a tailored session with Chukwemeka, look at, at his CV personally, look at his LinkedIn, and be able to correct one or two, and then push him again to continue applying till he lands that exact interview, okay? So this is what we do, but it is for the top people, which means you have to apply, you have to put it in the job tracker, and then we will know that you are actually doing everything that I've taught you and then help you in the instance that you are not getting job in, uh, interview invitation. So you are going to be learning using our learning management system, all right? So the, the learning, our learning style is two ways, right? It's going to be a live class where you're going to be speaking to someone comfortably in the class, and it's also going to be recorded, which means after each session, the recording of that exact session will be uploaded to this classroom where you just get to um, watch the videos afterward, which means... So far as you have access to the classroom, you have lifetime access to the recordings. And in the events that you need to refresh your memory, or maybe you missed a class and you want to know what happened, you can also go back to that exact class and watch the video. Okay, so quickly, I'm just going to walk us through the classroom so that we also see what happens in the classroom. I'm going to walk us through the classroom. All right, so let me quickly bring the classroom. So once you, you've registered with us, this is the classroom, right? The Tenalytics um, dashboard. So mine is still loading. You are going to register and we enroll you there where you also get to see and get to watch the videos that were also uploaded. So once you've been fully registered and onboarded in that um, um, learning management system, you will have access to everything. And this, this is to make sure that we can also track how well you are watching the videos. If you've not watched the videos, we're going to prompt you, hello, Chukwem, I've not been watching your videos. What is going on? Okay, I think I'm having trouble assessing this. Let me try again. 
All right, so while this is coming up, I'm going to instantly go and bring up, my screen is showing Lucky. Please confirm that you can see my screen, Lucky. Hi, Lucky, please confirm that you can see my screen. I'm showing my screen right now, but I'm trying to bring up the learning management platform for us to also have an experience of what we do there. Okay, I think someone has said, yeah. Okay, it's not responding at the moment. We'll get back to it, okay? But inside it also, we have the AI learner. That we, remember I mentioned that we also have the AI that helps you to also, if you're having code-based issue, the AI learner is there to assist you. If you're having interview prep issues, the AI learner is there to also assist you. That what you have to do, for example, if you, got, if you get a job, just paste the job inside that place and it's going to tell you, hi, Chukwemeka, this is what and what you need to do and to, for you to be able to scale that interview. So all this always seem impossible until it is done. And I'm really amazing. I'm really happy that Steven, Joel, and Michael came in earlier to speak that these things are possible because these are people that have been able to walk through this exact process and they're comfortably, you know, reaping the good deeds from it. And then you videos and what other um, testimonial videos from our past students. So please ensure you feed attendance form so that you get to also go through their videos and be able to understand how they were able to do all these things. So our next cohort is starting in two weeks time, right? I think, yeah. So two weeks time, that should be by 3rd of August. So our next class is starting by the 3rd of August. And you have the opportunity for you to be able to join the that we are taking in for this exact cohort. All right, it's starting 3rd of August and we have an amazing discount also for you by virtue of you being in this class. We have a discount for you, okay? I think my screen is no more moving. I have an amazing discount for you. Okay, it's moving right now. And it is just for the first 20 people to join this program, all right? It's for the first 20 people to join the exact program. And what this means is that if you want to transition to any of the courses that we are offering, you simply have a 20% discount, which means instead of you to pay $750, you just get to pay $600, right? Instead of you to pay £625, you just get to pay £500, right? Instead of you to pay 730 euros, you get to pay 580 euros. And instead of you to pay 1,125 Canadian dollars, you pay 900 Canadian dollars. And you can also make payments in your LCOI. That's your local currency. Simply log into the main stack link that my colleague just dropped and you will have access to make these payments. You can decide to go the route of first payment option and second payment option, which means for you to reserve the exact slot that is existing, the 20% discount, remember just for the 20 people, you can make the first payment and then you secure your spot, which means one month into the program, you can now make the second payment, right? You can make the first payment of $400 and you secure your spot. By the ending of August, you now get to make your second payment. Make $400 secure your spot, £350 secure your spot, €400 Euro secure your spot, and of course, Sunday Canadian dollars secure your spot. Then one month into the program, you can now make the second payment so use i'm going to walk us through how we can make these payments right so using the link that my colleague just dropped in the chat box what you simply need to do is to click on that exact link all right click on that exact link it's going to take you to the analytics enrollment page what do you need to do at that point if you want to enroll any course simply scroll down so if we scroll down, you're going to say, okay, these are all the courses that we are offering. And then click on the program you want to join. So for example, Chukwemeka, I want to join the cybersecurity guys and decide to click on cybersecurity. All right, so once you click on cybersecurity, remember I said you can also make payments in your local currency, which means it's going to directly, you know, pick my geolocation. And so okay, Chukwemeka, you are in Nigeria at the moment which means you have the option to make payments in NGN. And the converted rate is 960,000, right? So what you just simply need to do is to click on reserve a seat. But if I want to make first payments and second payments, I can decide to, okay, the minimum amount to pay 
is 500,000 to reserve a seat, I'll click on it, click on reserve a seat, all right? Then one month into the program, I can now make the subsequent 460 payments. And then at this point, I simply just need to put my name, Chukwemeka, my email address, and then I'm currently in Nigeria, so I put my Nigeria flag, and then let me put a random phone number and click on proceed. So once you do this thing, it's going to bring out the checkout option for you. So if you want to make payments using your card, you just need to put your card details, put the expiry and click pay, and that is it. If you want to make payments using the transfer option, you can simply click on transfer and you're going to copy the account number and make payments using your bank app. As simple as that. Once you are done with this, what you now need to do is go back to that enrollment page and click on upload your receipts and instantly upload your receipt. Someone from our team will now reach out to you with everything that you need to do. So that is basically it. And one amazing thing that you also get to get, remember one amazing discount, one amazing feature that you also get to have is you have the opportunity to become part of the first 20 to get a one month access on Amdari. So Amdari is a company that helps individuals to also work on several projects to optimize their experience, all right? So Amdari has more than 500 projects that you can work on. So you also get to have one month access to this platform, which makes it possible for you to build up on that initial experience and skill that you have already secured. So what are you still waiting for? The best time to enroll is right now. Remember, I always like to, uh, you know, talk on what our people that came earlier, Steven said, his friend was now um, saying, okay, why are you even learning from people that are in Nigeria and so on and so forth? How can they help you? But today, when his friend looks back at Steven and looks at himself, he's still doing, you know, um, jobs that is menial and so on and so forth. But today, Steven is working from the comforts of his home and is working for several companies. So you can also do this thing. And because you have people that have done it before, we know it is possible. I don't know if at this point anyone has any question. You can use the raise hand icon and I'll call you up to speak or you can drop your question in the chat box and I'll pick it up from there, okay? So I'm just going to do this for the next few minutes and we are instantly going to round up. If you have any question, use the raise hand icon and I'll call you up to speak. I can drop your question in the chat box. Any question from anyone or, okay, I think Lucky still have a question. Lucky, I've asked you to unmute. You have the floor, Lucky, please go ahead. Okay, good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening, Lucky. Please okay. go ahead with your question. Hi, Lucky, please, you can go ahead with your question. Okay, I think while we're waiting for Lucky, Richie's hand is up. Hi, Richie, I've asked you to unmute. You can go ahead and ask your question. Um, thank you, Chukwemeka. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the payment options. Can't it be at three installments? Just okay. a quick that's the case. All right. Yeah, fantastic question, right? So we always get this. So, so but we try to discourage people from making um three instruments because that, that's what we call uh, payment fatigue. At a point, you get tired. But what I advise you to do, my colleague is going to drop an email, which is finance at analytics.org. All right, so just email them and say, okay, I'm Richie, I would love to structure my own payments um, like this, like that, and so on and so forth. And they're going to respond to you if it is possible. They're the financial analyst, right? So they're going to analyze what you proposed and be able to tell you if it's possible, it is doable, okay? So my colleague will drop the finance at analytics.org email for you to be able to email them and be able to place your own request, Richie. I hope that's clear. So you can, you know, just give me a thumbs up in chat box or you can drop, drop, yes, it's clear so that I'll be sure that you understand um, right now. Hi, Onyinye, I've asked you to unmute. You have the floor, please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? My oh, name is Lucky. Okay, Lucky. It's Lucky. All right, Lucky, yes. go ahead. I was, okay, my question is, right? Um, I said, I have a zero knowledge about, um, 
You understand? Right, so, uh, my that. question okay. is, uh, you said, I said I have a zero knowledge, zero of IT, and I've always have a interest in doing the cyber security, but I have vast knowledge with the computer. So now my question is, um, I'm working with an organization right now. My timing is, um, I don't have an um, actual timing. I do eight hours, uh, no, sorry, 12 hours morning, eight to eight, then in the nine, sometimes eight to eight. I want to ask, how will I be able to manage such timing? All right, so uh, fantastic question, Lucky. Uh, about having zero knowledge, um, what I always tell people is that it is possible because we tend to teach you from the grassroots to the expert level. So even if you have zero knowledge of that exact domain you want to transition through, we are going to walk you through it. For example, someone like Abigail, uh, Abigail was able to transition from being a care worker in Canada to working with the government of Alberta right now in Canada as a business analyst. And she has two people that she's currently managing. So we have people that have done this before. It's now down to you to learn. Now, coming to your own timing, we have two based learning where you have live classes and the classes is also recorded and uploaded to your learning management system. Okay, which means even if you missed a class, you can always go back and watch the video of everything that happened in the class. And then you can now ask questions in the group that you have. Okay, so within the week, you also have one hour that the entire team is going to decide to have a session, a drop session within the class, just a one hour session, maybe on Thursdays, Friday, around 9 or 10 p.m. West African time where they just get to ask questions amongst themselves as they'll come in and also address some issues that they're having. So these are ways where people that miss classes also get to you know, have that experiential uh, experience that people that came to classes had. I don't know if that makes sense to you, Lucky. Yeah, you actually did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice one. You actually answered my question. Then, uh, in the terms of payment, right? Uh, I okay. think I'm losing you, Lucky. Oh, is this my network? Damila, please confirm that you can hear me. I can't hear Lucky anymore. Hi, Damila, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. All right, so while we're waiting for Lucky, hi, Onine, please, you can go ahead and speak now. Uh, okay, hi, good evening, everyone. I don't know. Is Lucky still speaking, or do you want me to speak? Yeah, you can go ahead. Lucky, please, you, you can type your question. I think you're having a little bit of network chat. Yeah, let me just type the question. Yeah, I'll type the question. Yeah, Anybody can go ahead. Yeah, exactly. So I'll pick it Thank up from you. there. Hi, Rene, please go ahead. Hi. So uh, two questions. I think you've been able to answer a lot of them, but I thought I could ask again um, so I could get in, in details. So first is, I know that uh, having to use all of these um, visual and all that would require a different operating system. I use Mac, right? Do I necessarily have to get a different tool, like maybe a Microsoft um, system to practice and all that during the lessons on Saturdays and, of course, afterwards? Um, and then secondly, and I know you've answered this question, but again, it's just fair that I can hear it from you again. So I'm, I've done product, product management in my work line. And then I, a bit transition a bit into business analysis, but I was thinking to go into cybersecurity. And I don't know if that's just such a huge transition or if I have to do it like, you know, gradually, what would you recommend when with these questions, yeah? Um, yeah, those are my questions. Thank you, Chukemaka. All right. Um, thank you, Inya. So I'm going to take it from the top. And the first one is around the operating system. So um, even though, for example, if you want to install Power BI, if you're doing data analysis and the likes, installing Power BI on Mac is a little bit different from installing it on Windows. But we still get to, uh, you know, walk people through how they can make these things happen. All right. So we teach people how to install some of this program inside your Mac iOS. All right. And then from the other one, which is around, um, um, okay, you have experience in project management and now you want to move into cyber security, it is 100% possible. Myself, I started civil engineering first degree, worked in the bank in governance risk, transitioned to be a data analyst from there, moved into this other aspect, right? So it doesn't really have to be 
that you need to follow this exact route. I'm just trying to tell you that it is possible. And because you already have the knowledge of the tech um, ecosystem generally, it will even aid your own journey, all right? So you don't really have to worry whether um, you can do it. You 100% can. We have people that transition to cybersecurity from yeah, maybe being a teacher. We have someone that is currently in the class. I think the person used to be um, a biological science teacher or something like that. Today, she's in the cybersecurity um, ecosystem. So it's really down to you, but it is 100% possible. I don't know if that makes sense to you. All right, so Dr. Jason, I'm going to ask you to unmute if I take the questions in the chat box. Hi, Jason, you have the floor. Hey, how are you? Um, I'm, all, I'm all right, how about you? I'm good, I'm doing okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Jason. Um, <clears throat> I wanna ask these questions, it might sound a bit technical, but this is my, uh, this side goes. For those of us in Nigeria, uh, as a matter of fact, how oh. is it possible for you to, um, if you're getting hired outside your jurisdiction, like US, Canada, UK, and all of that, uh, knowing fully that most of this country have this, um, you know, social security database and all of that, and on the other hand, you know that for you to have a job in UK, in Canada, in US, you also must be a US citizen or apparently a green card holder or you must have a social security number. So how is this possible for people outside all of this jurisdiction for them to be able to secure six figures, uh, you know, job in cybersecurity and also knowing the sensitivities in this kind of job roles because it involves you dealings with U.S. citizens that are residing in U.S. and you are not in U.S. You are not U.S. citizen. You're going to be actually, you know, working with um, serious sensitive data of U.S. citizens outside U.S. soil. So I just been trying to wrap my brain around this, how is this going to really work out? That's my question. All right. Thank you so much for that question, um, Dr. Jason. Uh, for example, Jason, do, do you know the, the country I'm currently? Say that again. Do you know the country I am in presently? Do you know where Tenalytics is registered? I, I no idea. I don't. All right. So uh, that, that's where I'm, trying, I'm coming in from, right? So when it comes to the tech ecosystem, it's always a global market. Tenalytics is fully operational in Canada. Right, we have staff that is in Kenya, we have staff in Nigeria, we have staff in UK, we have staff, of course, in Canada, um, there, right there. And what this means is that we all are fully remote, right? So there are jobs that when you apply to them, they are fully remote. There are jobs that require you to be resident in US for you to get that job. There are ones that require you to be resident in UK for you to get that job. But for you to be in your other country and get a role that is external, you need to look at the type of job you are going for. Is it fully remote or are they requesting the person to be a citizen, right? So why I understand you clear that jobs that require you to be a citizen and be dominant in that exact country, there's still jobs that's 100% remote that can be in a different company, country rather, and you're working for them. For example, here at Analytics, we are fully resident in Canada, but we have people that work across the globe, right? I'm currently in Nigeria. Tomorrow I might be in Rwanda <laughs> climbing a mountain, right? It doesn't mean that I'm not working. It just, it depends on that exact company's working style. For example, Abdrashid here, he works for Child 420 in US. After he finished his training with us, he used to stay, I think he's in Ekiti, Ekiti State in Nigeria. Afterwards, after he got this role, he moved to the Federal Capital Trade in Abuja and he's comfortably living in Abuja and working for this child 420 that is in the US. So it's 100% possible. It now depends on what that exact company is, is into and the mode of work that you are into. If, you are, if it's a company that is looking for residents, company that is looking for um, citizens, company that is looking for you to come in once in a while, definitely it may not work for you, right? But if it's a fully remote company, for example, if we are hiring here at Analytics, we do not look at your location. So far as you have the skill and the experience to deliver, you're 100% on board. So that's the type of company that has the mindset that you, as someone that wants to play on the global space, will also be looking out for. 
I don't know if that makes sense for you, um, Jason. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so, sorry to just, I'm just kind of too inquisitive. I understand your analysis and kind of, um, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But when you go through these um, recruiting, um, you know, links or like linkings and all of that, how would you be able to recognize? Because why I'm asking this question is that I have CISSP uh, for the past two years now, and I've been looking at jobs. And most of these jobs, if I tell you, I apply like 10, 20 jobs in a month, you know, especially um, I was in a yesterday's class, um, GRC or cybersecurity. And I also have CIISA, cyber, uh, sorry, um, certified information system audit, you know. So most of these jobs and recruiting uh, links majorly has been asking for clearances and all of that. Um, I'm residing in US, I'm right here in Chicago. And, you know, for some reason, I've not been able to secure any job role in this field, but I'm in another tech field, apparently, which is okay. So how would you be able to identify this job in quotes that are not resident like, that are not asking for you to have full time? If you can show me one or two, you know, um, like, on the line words I should look for in a LinkedIn that says I know every remote job, to be honest with you, they don't come with, hey, you have to be in UK, you have to be here. So some remote job would also still prefer when you are doing your BVG with them, they will prefer you to have green card before you could even apply for their jobs. And that is why the Indian counterpart in US have been finding it difficult to get a job remotely for their people in India, because I work with WIPO, you see. So they have to make sure they bring them down to US as expatriate and what have you. So this All is right. just- um, thank you so quick. So thanks so much for the question, Jason. Um, invariably, you are you are asking for us to teach you things that we have to teach you in the class. All right. And I'm going, I'm just going to scratch it a little bit. Okay. So basically. We, we like I mentioned, we bring in experts to the classroom to talk you through the hidden job markets. All right, remember, like I mentioned before, people think it's just LinkedIn, Glassdoor, and indeed that is available there for jobs. But there are, there are so many other job hubs that exist which recruiters are using to get all these roles filled. And because I don't want to refer it to as um. A, a, a lesser cost on companies, because when they, uh, for example, if you are in Nigeria and you're working for a company in US, it might be a lesser cost on the company than hiring someone in US and they're paying that exact person. So what recruiters do most time is to get this job off their exact soil, so far as it's fully remote. And these are things that we are going to walk you through. So I don't, I don't want to um, sort of show um, what is currently going on, but for example, I'm just going to show you this. This is what came in today, all right? Happy Sunday, guys. I got a remote job, but it's a US-based one. So I work from home. I say make a G stone. So these are things that people on day-to-day -day basic get once they are in all this program with us, all right? So for, for data privacy sake, I may not be able to bring as much those information for you, but it is fully available. And it is when you join this program that we talk to you about all these necessary things that you need to know. I don't know if that makes sense to you, Jason. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All right. All right. Or um, what we can do for you also, email inquiries, and maybe you can have a personal one-on-one -on -one session so that we'll get to talk personally. All right. Does that make sense to you? Okay, I think Jason has muted. Fantastic. Okay. Is there another question before we call it a day? Any other question? Any other hand raised? Okay, no other hand is raised. Any other question in the chat box? I think no question in the chat box. Fantastic, fantastic. So I guess we've done justice to this exact class. So before we round up, I'm just going to highlight on what um, a, um, this exact person on my screen, Ini Akbabio. So Ini went for a managerial role, but he got a CEO role. 
And that is after he underwent our own program. And it's not just him, he has experience in this space already, but he wasn't able to put his thoughts together. So after we worked with him, he wrote this amazing long paragraph thing to, um, um, you know, testimonial to show what, what he went through. So it is 100% possible, right? Most times people feel these things are not possible, but it is 100% possible. Okay, so ensure you fill the attendance form so you can get this slide and go through all these um, success stories of our past students, or you can go to YouTube and type analytics and you are going to see all these things there. So thank you to everyone once more for being with us at this very moment. I can't wait to see you in class come August 3rd. Thank you so much and bye for now. Cheers and have a wonderful day. Bye guys.